Hello and welcome to Berwick Speedway's Total Access Show with myself, Scott Frame. On this week's show, we'll look back over Saturday's win over the Glasgow Tigers in the BSN series and look ahead to this weekend's match against the Edinburgh Monarchs. We'll speak to Stuart Dixon and Louis Kerr and to go through all of that with me is, of course, Greg Blair. Uh, Greg, how are you, my friend? I'm very well, thanks, Scott. It's uh, been a, a nice wee busy week. Shame about the weather, but um, looks like it's going to be nice and sunny for Saturday. Excellent. And there's a wee spring in the step this week after an excellent one against the Tigers on Saturday night. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we thought the meeting was going to be a, a close one, but, you know, for to be at Shieldfield Park and see the Bandits winning over Glasgow, it's, uh, it was pretty special. And, you know, all the boys stuck in and it was a, a tremendous match. Right of the night has to go to Ian Ray and all the track staff, I would say, Greg. Uh, the weather was absolutely horrendous last week uh, and the, the guys were exceptional and get to get the, the meeting on was absolutely incredible. Um, and for the track to produce, um, as people can see, that have that didn't attend or weren't able to attend in the highlight show uh, as well, the, the level of racing was, was, was excellent. They weren't just right... Uh, kind of riding round they were actually racing and there was plenty of passing on the night and and passing for some some crucial points as well yeah i mean the fact that like 24 hours before the track was you know a total state um and for for the track staff and and razor to get out there and do what they did like you said is phenomenal um but i the the, the track did produce some some good racing it's what we want to see. I mean, you know, for the crowds coming to Berwick on, on Saturday night, one, they've saw some good close racing, and uh, two, it was a win over Glasgow, the defending champions. You know, you you can't not want to go back and watch that kind of action. How impressed were you with, with Louis Kerr on Saturday night? I think Louis Kerr has really, you know, it wasn't that he had a terrible meeting his, for, for his home debut, but Whatever it, you know, whatever he's done over the 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 week to get everything sorted out was spot on. I mean, it was a, a number one's job. We've not seen a number one go out and do things like that, and since we've had Chris Harris um in the team, so yeah, it was uh, it was great to see a number one doing a number one's job. Absolutely, and he was able to back top on the night as well. But um, as I say, we will catch up with Stuart and Louis, and I, I do say this in interviews with them as well, is that there's plenty of improvement and there's plenty of points. Uh, for points on this team as well to 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 come because we see uh, guys like Drew who maybe struggled at this, uh, in a couple of heats but then going out and what recording a fantastic heat win, um, guys like Bastian at the bottom end who is ultimately frustrated with himself uh, work at, at Workington last week and then against the Tigers this week because he feels as if he should be scoring more points. Uh, Rory at number five will obviously want to. Uh, add more points to his, to his total uh, as well, and as I say, there's there's plenty of improvement in this side to come. Yeah, that's it. I think you know, with um, Bastian being frustrated, it's good that he's not like sitting thinking, "Oh, well, I'm quite happy with my performance," because that wouldn't be ideal. You know, he's striving for better, and that's what we want to see. We want him to get better, and as as fans, and then the the promotion want to see him getting better, and we know what he's capable of doing. Uh, you have to remember it's very early doors in the season and I think that as the better weather comes it gets a bit warmer guys get I know they're always talking about getting set up sorted but once you get a set up sorted at Berwick there's no looking back once you've got that machine working and you know what you want to do with it it's going to be uh, you know if, if you're gating and you're going fast you're not getting touched at Berwick Absolutely uh, Let's catch up with team manager Stuart Dixon now Stuart, another victory for the Bandits on Saturday night against Glasgow, but it was it was definitely um, hard fought. Uh, just looking, if you're looking through the kind of scorecard on the night, was there was there some nerves floating about earlier on, or was it simply just that Glasgow were a good team and kept us honest? I think about both, Scott. To be honest, we um, I thought we always looked the team who were going to win it from the outset, in my opinion. I don't think the score really flattered us in, in any way. Um, obviously, Glasgow will, will point to uh, 
beaten, uh, which could which kind of reverse to say we didn't see a team, but my sole focus was big. I think we were all pretty keen to the the thirteen match on beating run and I think there was kind of drive for behind you know and it got us over the line. Um but slightly later than what I what would I hope for. So obviously, Stuart, in the, the second half of the meeting, the guys really kind of dug in and I think we can all kind of point to like kind of heats nine and maybe heats 12, uh, as we've seen in the, the kind of highlights package that we put out this week. The, 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 that's, the, that's the kind of races that turned the meeting in its head, really, isn't it? Yeah, heat nine, you know, you point to that. Um, so Drew Kemp popped out, showed us what he can do. And if you look at the, his heat time and heat nine, and then look at the subsequent times between Heat 10 and Heat 15. I think it was about a second quicker than all of them. So it shows you the sort of speed that he's got when he hits the front. But um, yeah, uh, 9 was important. 12 was also important as well. That uh, I think it was, was that the 5-1 we got with Jai and Bastian over Leon. Yep. That yep, was, I think that, that was very important also, uh, as, as were all the races. But those two, you quite rightly highlighted, yeah. Just how delighted were you with with Louis Kerr uh, on on Saturday night? He really, um, I think it was mentioned in the kind of commentary that there, there was maybe some people outside the kind of Berwick bubble that were maybe doubting the fact that Louis was a, a number one in this league. Um, considering how good Chris Harris is around Shieldfield, uh, we all know that mm-hmm. as kind of Berwick fans, um, to beat Chris three times out of three in, in Saturday night was was incredible really and it was really it was really really good that, that's no mean feat to, to beat Bomber Harris from Berry obviously you guys had them there before I was there and um, he's exceptionally quick and very entertaining around there I may add um, I think Louis Kerr for me he didn't have anything to prove but you know to score 13 points against arguably one of the better teams in the league um, I, I never did any doubts that he's number one he got an 860 average last season. You don't get that unless you're a good rider. Um, he raced in more than 50 points for Oxford, which I talked so on earlier on in one of your shows. So I think if there was any doubts, they've certainly been they've certainly been put to one side now, that's for sure. Absolutely. And just looking at the the meeting, Stuart, as well, um, there's probably two things I would, I would kind of take away for this is that the one major positive uh, is definitely the fact that all seven riders had at least a paid win um, throughout the meeting, which is the second whole meeting in a row that that's, that's there. That obviously bodes well for the future. But I, I think it's kind of fair to say that there's actually plenty of room for improvement here as well because you, you look at kind of Rory, one heat, one three thirds, that's not what he would kind of want. Um, you look at Bastion, you can see his frustration. You've seen it kind of last week when we were at Workington as well. He's expecting to score bigger points. So although we've got the positive of everybody chipping in uh, on the night and everybody playing their part, there's still a lot of room for improvement by this side as well. There is. I think it's fair to the meetings that we've had, not all seven riders have clicked at the same time. That that's something that you know that as a team manager's dream, if and when it happens, it doesn't happen a lot over the season. I'll be honest with you, as you rightly say, uh, you know Rory to get AIDS, I thought he was worth more. He can certainly get more. Freddie Hodder struggled a little bit with the track conditions on the track walk. The track was just perfect, the same as what it was the week before. But when the track opened up, the race and starting the high wind, you know, back out a lot quicker than we anticipated. A lot of dirt was going over the fence. Um, and we lost the track a bit quicker on Saturday night than we did the previous weekend. So it kind of affected certainly Bastian. We've seen him trying his outside swoops. Freddie Hodder could make ground up his outside, but no, through no fault of MD, I may add, but the track just slickened off a little bit quicker because of the windy conditions. Same for both teams, in all fairness. Absolutely. Uh, just last one on the Tigers, Stuart. Um would you like a larger lead to take to Ashfield for the for the second leg of this BN, BSN series clash? Because we know that uh, points are going to be vital here if we're going to top the group. In a word, yes. Um, I think, you know, eight or ten points would have been good. If we'd have got eight or ten points, I'd probably still be saying, you know, ten or twelve would have been better. So I think so. No matter what you get, a team manager, you tend to always want to be a bit more. Um, as I say, six. It's decent, you know, if we do go into TS, you know, sort of thing, we, we, we need to choose it wisely and get it done properly. Hopefully we can benefit from it if we do find ourselves six behind at any time. But uh, it's a lead of some sort and it's something we've got there. 
certainly look to protect, yeah. And we move on this week, uh, our second BSN match uh, of the season at uh, home to Edinburgh. Edinburgh looks as they've got a solid side this year. They've obviously got Josh, Josh Pickering at number one. Uh, they fill the, the rest of these kind of spots in the top top half of the team with kind of Justin Sergeman, Paco Castagna, Kai Thompson, all guys that are capable of winning races around Shieldfield as well. So this will be a this will be another tough task. Yes, definitely. I mean, there's, there's a lot old art as well. I'm pretty sure Edinburgh will come a large following, very much like Glasgow did last Saturday night. There'll be a Derby feel to it. They they will sense a different environment when they roll into Shieldfield Park on Saturday night. There is a positivity about our stadium at the moment. It's imperative that we keep this going as long as we can and win, and keep winning our home meetings because the confidence will grow within the side. But, you know, we, we certainly won't be taking them lightly, any more lightly than with Glasgow. You know, so I think it'll be the same Track walk, talk, determination, focus. You know, this is another team who could potentially come and take points off us. So we need to be on our game to get the two points on there Saturday night, yeah. Just how important is it to make sure that the guys get a win, no matter how big? Um, as I say, it is a tough test, but as we just spoke about there in terms of the Glasgow one, uh, getting a bigger lead to take away f- f- from home, but ultimately getting... Uh, a win on the board and two points on the board is, is, is kind of n- number one priority, really. That's a nail in the head because sometimes you can look far and you can start targeting. You want to win with 10 and 12 points and all of a sudden you take your eye off. The first thing, the most important thing, is to win the actual meeting on the night. Um, I think that'll be the, the, the message that, you know, we just keep doing what we're doing. Uh, don't get any fanciful ideas about double-figure winning scores, you know, against the team. Let, let's just concentrate on winning the meeting through challenges at us, we'll come back with through challenges at them. It should be a crack meeting, it's one, it's one I'm looking forward to. Absolutely. And then we're going to two away meetings, obviously, with uh, against Edinburgh and Glasgow to finish off our BSN series group. Uh, Stuart, I know you're, you're a big thinker in terms of the sport as well. Uh, we've seen you name the same uh, riding order for the, uh, this week's match against Edinburgh. Uh, I take it from that that you're obviously happy with the pairings that you've got. There's no need for tinkering and you see relationships building. Yeah, um, I think relationships are important. What riders riding with each other, getting an understanding. Certain home, it's not something I'm looking to tinker with, but I do have ideas for the upcoming away matches, which I'll, I'll keep to myself at the moment, but I do have the ideas and hopefully how we can maximise some points uh, on, on the road as we look to, to, to hopefully hold on to two leads uh, if we can hopefully get a result on Saturday night, a positive result on Saturday, yeah. In terms of the wider group, uh, Stuart, uh, obviously me and you have had kind of conversations away from camera, but um, it definitely, this BNC, BSN series group, it, it does seem very, very tight and it does seem that the bonus points and perhaps one away one breaks the kind of tie between the three. Yes, without a doubt, it's, it's a short it's a short group, let's be honest, it's two home and two away. There's not a lot of room for error. I think if we can we can win on Saturday night, I think we're already in a good position. There should that that be two home wins. You know, it's something that nobody can come and take off us. They're in the bank. It's you know, we then basically go to these two away tracks, Glasgow and Edinburgh, and, and the pressure will be on them. They have to win their home meetings if we've managed to get over the line on Saturday night. Obviously, that's what I keep talking about. If we go over the line on Saturday night, if we do, I think it will it'll open up the whole group. Cautious optimism, Stuart. I like it. Um, just last mm. word, uh, Stuart. You mentioned earlier on in the interview in regards to Edinburgh turning up to a different Shieldfield Park. Uh, the buzz around the club is definitely a lot different to what it's been um, for a, a, a long number of years now. Um, we've seen large crowds at the first two two matches. Um, a different atmosphere in the pits, and there's just that there's just that spark in the air, isn't there? And it's it, it's a it's a good feeling, and you can see the fans. Now we are, I think, back to heats 13 and 15 on, on Saturday night. The noise levels were, were really good and the, the atmosphere was there and it was it felt old school, didn't it, in terms of the the, the buzz around about the about, about the stadium? It certainly did. I noticed the reaction in the pits amongst the riders. I know obviously five of the riders were you know part of the Glasgow beating Berwick last season or seasons before, subsequently Jay Etheridge was there, but the, the new riders were well drilled in what was required. I, I seen I seen the delight in the management faces, the track creators, the guy guys that helped the pit gate. Just just the overall feeling 
and I watched it obviously quite carefully when I was in the truck and you see the stand and the terraces, the third bend gang. I mean, there was a lot happening and it's something that, as I've said before, we want to keep it going as long as we can. There's a nice feeling. Obviously, I can't compare feelings to previous seasons because I was only there as a visit team manager. But what I've seen on Saturday night, the, 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 the club's it's came alive again. You know, the, the, you know, everybody's buzzing in the pits, everybody's helping each other. And you get that with a winning formula. My job is to make sure we keep winning at home. That, that's the key to keeping everybody happy. So as I mentioned to Stuart during his interview, Greg, um, really pleasing aspect for, for Saturday night. And again, and it's again, as I said to Stuart, two weeks in the trot, um, every single rider getting a, at least a paid win uh, on the night. That's, that bodes well for the future that everybody's mucking in and there's a re- real team ethos there, isn't there? Yeah, everybody knows what they're capable of doing. Everybody knows what they they can go out and do. Um, you know, we're not going to win every meeting. It would be it would be uh, it'd be nice if we did, but um, we know what we're capable of doing, and that's the that's the key point of it. Going up against working and getting that win, and then of course against Glasgow. The confidence must be building, not just with the like the 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 guy the guys that are going out there and doing the getting all the big wins in, but you know lower down the team like Freddie, he he can see what he done in that first meeting. Maybe didn't have the greatest one at, um, against Glasgow, but going forward, he knows what he's capable of, and uh, and that's that's the key point there is that your confidence is high, and I I do feel like that in the pits confidence is high. I think for, for Freddie, Greg, uh, you mentioned it there as well. Obviously, it, it would appear that um, conditions were, weren't to what he was expecting on, on Saturday night and he maybe struggled to adapt. Definitely a learning experience for Freddie on Saturday night, I would say, in terms of how uh, the Berwick track can change, uh, especially when we've had that, the type of weather that we had on Saturday. It's not weather that we would normally see in terms of the, how how windy it was and how how much that dried the track out. Um, so it's been able to adapt to that through throughout the meet as the meeting goes on. But again, that's going to come to him with, with more experience that he gets and more more exposure at this level. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those things where just adapting to, to different tracks, like you say, with the way that the, the wind was carrying into the track, it dried it out. You'd have thought that it was going to be heavy, deep with all the rain that was there, but you know we had all the all the wind, which wasn't the case. Um, but you know he's still just a young lad; he's only seventeen, getting going out there and having to learn, not just racing and riding the bike, but how to adapt to the conditions. Getting a, a you know something that he can write down in the book and say, right, well the track's kind of like this. This is where I need to go through there. Um, and yeah, it's it's all learning. But the, I think the good thing is that from what I've heard of just about everybody that I've spoke to about Freddie is that he's asking questions and he's listening and he's not just taking the information in and going, right, okay. He's actually taking that information and he's using it on the track, which is great. You know, you've got riders like uh, Rory Schlein, who the amount of people he'll have spoke to, and we know that he's in in the setup with the, the British youth system. He's, uh, he's going to want to help more if he sees that, you know, a young lad's take on board what he's saying. So just moving away for, for Freddie, Greg, uh, and looking ahead to, to Saturday night, uh, we announced on, on Tuesday the, the Bandits line up, the same starting seven, um, and as Stuart explained, that, that continuity is key for the home matches, though he may look uh, at changing the riding order for the upcoming away matches at Glasgow and Edinburgh as well. Um, we stick with the same riding order. Uh, Edinburgh haven't been on track as yet this season. Uh, they are scheduled to be at Glasgow on Friday evening, weather permitting. Um, but they line up with Josh Pickering at, at number one, obviously a, a very good rider at this at, at championship level. Um, looking at Josh as well, he didn't want to race in the championship this year, if I remember right, from the end of last season. Um, but the offers maybe he was expecting maybe elsewhere in Poland or whatever the situation may be, uh, didn't materialise for him when he's back at the Monarchs. Um, what I would say for a kind of neutral point of view from that is that it's great to see that our rider of Josh's calibre coming to Berwick on Saturday night, he really has over the last few years established himself as one of the top guys uh, in the championship. And I'm really looking forward to him. He always gives it a really good crack around Edinburgh. He's at the top of the order there. Definitely Edinburgh's biggest threat, Greg. 
oh yeah, it's uh, he's a fantastic rider, and you know that you know even if he misses the gate, he's going to give it a hundred and ten percent to to try and get out there and uh, and and get that win. But saying that, he is you know he is beatable um, around Berwick. Oh, again, we don't know what the conditions could be like coming up to that stage. You know, we know that Josh likes it to have a little bit of material on there. Um, but you know, it's it's all that'll be up to him to sort of get himself set up for that. But yeah, it's certainly going to be a, a a fantastic rider to to see around Shieldfield on Saturday night. Definitely. And just to look through the riding order there, the 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 remaining the remainder of the top five in, in Lassie Fredrickson, Kai Thompson, Paco Castagna, Justin Sedgman, all solid riders, all riders, especially Sedge, if uh, if he's got his gating gloves on, extremely tough to beat, extremely tough to pass um round any track. Um so that in itself presents um its own challenges because uh, especially with Sedgy, we've seen him at Shieldfield where he maybe go out and win a heat by the length of the straight and then go out and lose it by the length of the straight. And it all depends where it is, where he comes out at Ben 2 on lap 1. Um, but extremely tough to pass. And I think that's going to be, we, we need to make sure that we've got our gating gloves on on Saturday night. Yep, certainly do. We, we Like you said, we've saw it with uh, with Sedgy. What, you know, he guested for Berwick last season. Um, and he is fast. He's a, he's one of these um fast boys out there. We did see that on Saturday night Rory and uh and, and Louis made a cracking gate together uh to get out and coming out that first and second bend in front. That's what you want to see in a and I think it was heat thirteen. Uh that kind of thing. That's what we need from the boys. Um hopefully that they've uh, they can keep a hold of them gloves and we can use them uh going forward for uh, for Saturday night's meeting because it's going to be tough if they're not getting. In terms of style, one of my favourite riders uh, is coming to Berwick on Saturday and Paco Castagna. You can always rely on Paco for a bit of entertainment uh, as well. Um, interesting visitor at number seven for the Monarchs. Uh, many fans, Berwick fans during the winter were obviously expecting this man to be in Berwick colours this year, given that he was Berwick's rider of the year last year. Uh, a lot of fans disappointed he wasn't, quite rightly so, because obviously he was, he was an integral part of, of last season's team. Um, obviously, the people, everybody goes to sleep at some point, we wake up and we've got different teams. Um, I'm sure we're happy, everybody's happy now with the 1-7 that we've got, but we'll definitely welcome back Connor Coles with open arms on, on Saturday night. Um, and definitely a rider that will have the respect of the home crowd. Yeah, he will. And, you know, I rode with him um, all, well for the majority of the season. I was there with the, with the Bullets last year. Great guy. Um, you know, fantastic, fantastic rider. He doesn't mind sticking it in the dirt up the inside. Uh, and he can make a cracking gate at times as well. He's going to have that track knowledge. And what the thing is that... Um, Freddie and Bastion are going to have to look out for in that heat too is he's wanting to win that you know he that was his home club last year uh, he will want to go out and win that heat so them boys are going to have to be fired up and ready for that because I know it myself if once you've left a place you want to you want to do well when you go back and I think that's uh, that's Connor's main goal of the night will be to win, win heat too. Where do you see Edinburgh's biggest strength Greg? Uh, I probably see it <laughs> I would say with their uh, with our top two heat leaders, I think uh, their one in five is going to be uh, is going to be strong. Obviously, Josh Pickering, um, you know, he doesn't often have bad bad meetings. So I would say, yeah, there that's that's going to be their biggest strength. Um, so yeah, we'll have to, we really will have to hope that the that the guys can keep up with them and uh, try and get out the gates, like we've said. Absolutely. Um, Louis Kerr, on the back of three wins from three races against Chris Harris this Saturday night, he'll obviously face off against Josh Pickering, what we would expect to be three times uh, on Saturday evening as well. Uh, we caught up with Louis uh, earlier today. Louis, uh, another great win uh, on Saturday night. Um, a fantastic night for yourself. You you must be like kind of delighted with the way that, that Saturday night went. Um, only really dropping you dropped one point to an opponent all night. It was a kind of dream night for yourself. It was, mate. Yeah, it um, it was fantastic. You know, um, obviously uh, working to an away was good for myself, so it was nice to carry that on and and take that into uh, to the home meeting. It was pretty tough the week before. Um, 
but uh, no, I loved every second of it. And to get that win for for Berwick, um, you know, all those times before they had they had struggled against Glasgow, so it was nice. Absolutely, and just just for your own point of view, before we kind of get into the the kind of meeting, obviously the week before, um, it didn't go so well at, at home. But um, is there is there a, is there a kind of feeling of the fact that it was a challenge match? It was it was good to get that kind of track time around Shieldfield without the pressure of um, maybe kind of competitive competition, really. Yeah, possibly. I mean, for me, I, you know, I want to go and win every race, so. Um, but that didn't really come to my head. I I, I just struggled with the starts. Um, and Derek is, is difficult you know, when, you're, when you're at the back. But, um, you know, I've had a lot of back now, a few more meetings since then. So, yeah, every time I got on the bike, I'm feeling better. And um, and probably one of the best I've ever felt in my career Saturday, so early on in the season. It's, it's a nice feeling. So I'm looking forward to, to Saturday again. And uh, an Oxford, Oxford Spires teammate, uh, Chris Harris, very, very good round uh, Berwick, but you lowered his colours three times on the spin. Um, not to be sniffed at around, around Berwick, as I'm sure you've probably heard two or three times since uh, mm-hmm. since Saturday night as well, but that that is obviously a huge kind of confidence boost as well for you. Yeah, massive. Um, probably the biggest bit about it, really. Um, because you know, I had so many comments of you know people saying you know Bomber's a legend here and pretty much unbeatable. You know, even from the back, he he comes through and and uh, we 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 just had so much speed on Saturday that you know when he when he got into say second, he never closed the gap on me and um, it was a nice feeling to have you know because you never know when Bomber's um when he's behind you you, you know it's it's quite um. You're on your toes, that's for sure. But no, it was, it was good to, to get the win over him. At Glasgow kept the Bandits fairly honest throughout the meeting as well. It was only really in the second half of the meeting uh, that the Bandits, Bandits managed to kind of establish a lead with a couple of big heat advantages. But even then, we never really kind of tried to shoot Glasgow off right until that very, very last heat. Um, heats 13 and 15, there was obviously a lot of pressure on that. Um but ultimately, there was there was a great atmosphere around the, around the stadium, big crowd as well, and it just I think from one point of view, I never really felt as if we were going to lose those heats. Um, but I suppose that's that's a good feeling for us as kind of fans watching it as well. Um, but for yourself, I, again, it's just that as you mentioned at the top of the the kind of interview, getting the monkey off the back, we're getting the one over Glasgow and putting ourselves in a decent position in the group as well. Yeah, massively, I think. You know, there's a lot of people talking about Berwick and um, we wanted to carry that on, you know, from the, the Workington meetings. So we wanted to carry that on against um, a top side like Glasgow. And I'm sure people are even, you know, talking about us even more now. So it's a nice feeling to have. And um, and, and the fresh feel around Berwick, I think everyone wanted that, that fresh feeling there. And um, I think, you know, everyone's got that now and there's, there's great feel around the club. I mentioned this to Stuart as well, Louis. Um, I just want to kind of get the Raiders' point of view in this as well. Um, the the win over Glasgow is is massive in, in terms of getting the monkey off the back and obviously it, it, it keeps the ball rolling uh, for the team. One positive is, is that everybody chipped in and got at least a paid win on the night, the second week in a row that that's happened, as I, as I said to Stuart. Um, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. I mean, there's, there's guys that will be unhappy with certain rides uh, throughout the night, but it's testament to the whole team uh, to get the, the result over the line when there is still improvements to be made uh, from from each rider as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, the week before at home, you know, the, the second strings and the reserves done their job, more than done their job. You know, me and Rory had an off night and then working to... Uh, me and Rory done well and you know and we're still winning and I think Saturday um, the reserves were a little bit off compared to the week before so you know when we when we're all firing then I think we're going to do some serious damage and looking ahead to this week um, just how important is it to get the win on the board um, to keep the ball rolling in the BSN group to get two, win, two home wins on the board uh, to take it into the away matches that are going to be so crucial but number one priority being the win on Saturday yeah just to get you know the points on the board again get the, them two home meetings uh, wins in the bag and take the confidence that we're going to have from them into the away meetings and um, they're going to be tough 
but like I said, every, you know, it's going so well for us at the moment, and um, there's no reason why we can't do anything away from home. And it is going well, and as you mentioned, there is people kind of talking about Berwick in a different light now than what they maybe have previously, because uh, it's all right saying a team looks good in paper, but you've got to see the kind of results on track, and we've looked good so far. Um, but that then in turn is, is, that, is there a danger of complacency setting in and maybe taking them on up slightly? Yeah, I, I, I can't see a bad side. So, you know, we have to we have to go into every meeting how we do, uh, you know, that, that it's going to be one of the toughest matches we're going to have. So, you know, we, we all need to go out there and want to win every every race and, and Stuart make sure we've got their mentality as well. So, um, yeah, we'll just keep doing what we're doing and hopefully we'll be getting the wins. Edinburgh have got a kind of a solid looking side. I would say they've got obviously a strong number one in, in Josh Pickering, uh, backed up with guys like Kai Thompson, Justin Sedgman, um, and probably a sneaky rider that's going to be a good round shield field is, is the Berwick rider of the year last year in, in Connor Coles. So in terms of round Berwick, there are no slouches. Um, and that just goes to prove the, the, the kind of test that's in front of Berwick and that there isn't, a, there, isn't any, a, 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 there isn't room for complacency, as you say, in, in this division where there's so many strong teams. Yeah, no, none at all. So we're going to have to uh, carry on from, from Glasgow. Um, we'll all be full of confidence from that and um, yeah, take no prisoners is, you know we're going to get that win on the board So I mentioned just there before we went to, to Louis interview in terms of Louis coming up against uh, Joshy Pickering um, similar type of challenge I would say Greg uh, for, for Louis in this one is, is last week um, Bombers obviously one that's not renowned for the gate and gloves but uh, goes like a steam train to be able to pass you and knows, knows every line and every track to get by and will use every line to his advantage. Uh, Joshua Pickering is very much the same. Maybe a slightly better gator than Bomber but if he doesn't make the gate he's definitely working every inch of the track to get by you and that's why well, he's going to need eyes in the back of his head at, in the back of his head at times, isn't he? Oh yeah, he will. Uh, and, you know, it's his thing is in my opinion, he's been up against maybe the hardest man in the championship for uh, for coming from the back, and he handled that pretty well uh, against Chris Harris. So he just needs to do the same thing against uh, against Pickering, and if he can, if he can do that, then you know he'll be he he will be wanting to be doing his number one's job, and he will be wanting to be uh, the the monarch's number one. So. He's gonna have to just keep that form that he had last Saturday night and uh, and drive that forward. As as the kind of as we look at the kind of bigger picture, Greg, in terms of the the BSN series, it's a it's a bit of a sprint. The BSN groups, um, in terms of two home, two away, the real main main thing is is that getting two home ones in the book and just making sure that you don't slip up at home. And that would make Saturday night's meeting vital if we're going to if we're going to progress. Yeah, and the boys will know that as well. And you know, we've already started off with a little bit of silverware um, with the Borders Trophy. They'll be wanting to keep uh, keep themselves in for uh, for the BSN Trophy as well. You know, what a way to start off the the season with two of them. Uh, you know, titles coming in. So I think you know, looking at this season. It's uh, it's I myself am more confident in uh, in the bandits getting this win on Saturday night, and I really do think that the the monarchs will be looking at this, and it's um, it's going to be more tough for them than it is us. How impressed are you with the the atmosphere in and around the club at the minute? Um, when we look at the kind of social media channels, when we look at the crowds in the stadium, when we see the buzz in the pits, when we see the riders and how they are, we, we everybody there, there's definitely there's a there's a chemistry I've not seen at, at Berwick uh, previously. Um, it's good to be on this crest of a wave at the minute where where it, it seems to be going for us and. To be honest, Louis mentioned in his interview that people are talking about Berwick, but I think kind of people in the club are, are not really that bothered about the kind of outside noise. It's about the feelings inside the group, isn't it? And inside the club, and and it's good to have this kind of winning feeling at the moment and uh, striving to keep it going on Saturday. That's it. You can 
you can feel it. You really can. I mean, just you, all you have to do after the meeting on Saturday night, especially, was going into the black and gold and seeing how busy that place was. You know, beforehand, I think um, a defeat for Glasgow, the place would have been pretty bare, and it would have just been the regulars that would uh, that were there. But everybody's got a smile on their face. Everyone's saying what a cracking meeting, and it's not just the winning; it's the racing as well that the guys are putting out there. You know they're putting on a show, which is what we need to to have happen. Um, and I do like the fact, you know, it's a it's a new look team. You know, the kids are already getting their new favourites in and everything else like that. And we are quite happy. You know, we go back to talking about Freddie Hodder. He's got a, you know, he's up and coming. There could be great things happen with him in the future. So I think the the the, the fact that the fans are going to be able to say, oh well, you know, he rode for us first in the in the in the championship, that kind of thing. So I do think that the vibe is completely different to what it has been previous and uh it's just it's a it's a really good vibe. Absolutely. A kind of matata as they say. I'm sure that <laughs> neutral fans watching this will be th- sitting thinking. Um tickets are live as we've posted on the social media channels now for Saturday night's event. Uh, against uh, Edinburgh Monarchs in the BSN series. Uh, tickets are priced at £18 for adults until midnight on Friday, so that's a discounted rate until then. Uh, or alternatively, if you want to pay cash on the gate, uh, it's £20 and it is cash only. Uh, tickets on the day were still available um, from the website as well, uh, right up until kickoff. Um, you can get your tickets at berwickspeedway.com forward slash tickets. Uh, and you can keep up to date with the bandits on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Greg, uh, I'm really looking forward to Saturday night. Hopefully another one for the Juicing Bandits against the Monarchs. And I look forward to seeing you then, pal. Yes, I, I will see you then. 